Good afternoon, Rattler Nation. Welcome into another episode of the Arizona Rattlers Coaches Show with Kevin Guy. My name is Floyd Simmons, and we welcome you in. And there he is. There's the coach across the way. Coach, welcome. Welcome to the show, and it's good to see you. Good to see you, Floyd. How you doing today? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. Having a, having a great day. Had a great holiday weekend. Hope you did as well. Um, and and obviously with the Rattlers, a chance to celebrate back on the winning track after that stumble the week before to get a victory. How, how about you? How about you? The weekend? Weekend? Uh, did you get a chance to get some time off and enjoy a break? Well, let's see. Uh, we played Sunday, so Saturday was the day before the game, so not not a lot of time there getting ready for the game. And then Sunday we played, and uh, <laughs> Monday we came in. You know, we watched the film, made our corrections. Uh, you know, jumped in the weight room, and we had the guys out of here by lunch, and everybody got, you know, pretty much the, the rest of the day off. Um, you know, um, we play them back-to-back, which is rare. You don't see that uh, very much, you know, in a schedule. So, you know, are, are we going to make some adjustments, make some tweaks? Uh, yeah, uh, we, yeah, we are, but we don't have to put in a full week with uh, everything, you know, you know since, since we play them back-to-back. So, I did get the coaches off yesterday. We were back in today uh, for practice, and uh, we'll practice again tomorrow, and we'll travel Friday. Well, that team that Coach is talking about, that team he's referring to is the Bay Area Panthers. That was the visitor into Phoenix on Sunday afternoon and a 38-23 to victory for the Rattlers, picking up another victory, moving to 8-2 and on the campaign, and, by the way, with that eighth victory, sitting in a virtual tie with the Northern Arizona Wranglers right now, who are also eight and two at the top of the Western Conference standings. We'll talk about the Wranglers and what they represent in the near future for, for the Rattlers. That's coming up soon, but let's, let's uh, go back to the game coach. Let's talk about that win on Sunday. It was a win that was marked by a slow start, very slow, low scoring first half it was a half of football that you described to us in the broadcast when we questioned you toward halftime. You said it was a pretty boring first half. You may have even said it was the most boring half of football you've been uh, you've you've coached, um, and and it was certainly represented that way in the low scoring. So let's look back on the game. The second half got better, but uh, let's uh, let's visit that first half for a second. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I was very candid, in, you know, in what I said and meant what I said. Um, you know, in, indoor football is different. It, you know, we, we, we have a product. And uh, listen, the Arizona Rattlers, we're built to play whatever you want to play. You, you want to you want to slow things down and play a low possession game, and we'll certainly do that. We can do that. Don't want to do that. I don't think it's good for the fans. You know, I don't think it's good for business. Um, you know, we have a product that's different than any other product out there. And, and you could go and, and, and watch a, you know, a high school game or college game. Uh, and, and see low scoring games. Okay, uh, when you when you come to indoor football, it, you know it's a fast paced game. Um, you know, and fans want to see scoring. I, I, you know, I know that I've been in this deal for over twenty years, and you know, um, I just hate to put a product out there like that for the fans. Um, you know, because you know, to me, you know, you do that. You do that week in and week out, and you know it's an organizational killer, it's a coach killer, okay? And uh, you know, it, it, you know, indoor football is about entertainment, okay? We're in the entertainment right. business, and we're in the talent business, and and you know, you know, from a marketing standpoint, we build a, you know, we 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 build a, you know, uh, an event around the the football game, but you know, the football game still needs to be, you know, fun. I and I, I get coaches, you know. You know, it's about wins and losses, whether they're going to, you know, be have their job or not. And it's about results like any other position in football. Uh, but I, I, but I, you know, I'm just a firm believer that, you know, um, you know, that can kill an organization. Okay. And we had a great, we, we got a great fan base. And I, I just hate playing those games in front of our fans because we got the best fans in the country and we want them when they come and we want them to have a great experience. Yeah, Rattler Nation is used to a, a lot of offense, very potent offense. You've got that in terms of the makeup of the the roster here led by the quarterback, Drew Powell, and some very talented guys around him. 
and you want to see that on display. I would also venture a guess then, Coach, that it, it's not just fun for the fans, and the fans of indoor football do come out for that very thing. They want to see a lot of fireworks. But it's got to be fun for the players, right? I mean, players have got to love playing in this type of uh, upscale, um, up-tempo kind of kind of football. Yeah. Hey, listen, I mean, you know, you play 16 games. You can have a weird game every once in a while. Sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce the way you want it to bounce, and you can have a weird game. But I, I think that, um, you know, we wound up playing about eight possessions, I believe, and that was only because we got the ball in the second half and kind of sped the game up, you know, a little bit. And, you know, scored the first couple of times out in the second half and like three plays and, you know, and, and it made us play more possessions. But those first, you know, that first half, man, we were we were in some long, I, I believe there was one drive that took up half a quarter, you know. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's good for business or not, but, uh, well, I know. I know, it, I know it's not good for business, but. We certainly want to put a better product out there. Our fan, our players like to play, and uh, you know that's that's how I feel. That's how I believe. I'm, you know, I'm not changing for anybody. Um, yeah. And and you know, uh, that's that's why we're number one in the league in scoring offense. And um, you know, we have been for many many years. Um, you know, if we're not number one, we're number two. And and you know, we put a system together that's going to be an exciting. Uh, I just don't, you know, I, I believe there's an overall philosophy. If you play those low possession games, there's not much room for error, okay? You get stopped, you know, you, you turn the ball over, and all of a sudden, you know, but you you know, you play a, a, a 10 to, to 14 possession game, you got more room for error, and, and, you know, your defense can come out, you get more chances of getting stops and keep trying to get some separation. And uh, But like I said, we're built to do both, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll be ready for both. Hey, well, Coach, uh, not only does is your team uh, at the top when it comes to offensive production, you've got a very electrifying offense. Can get it? Can it get out there and get after it? But you've also got the top fan base in in the league. Um, you know, great fans, great support. There's a reason for that. They they love the brand of football that the Rattlers put on the field. And it would be to everybody's uh, advantage if teams saw that template, followed that template, and gave their fans something to really come out and, and get yeah, excited I mean, I, for. You know, I'm an organizational guy, you know, and I'm, I'm going to do what's best for my organization, And but I'm also a league guy. And, you know, the the flip side of that coin is when, when I've been on the road before and I'm in someone else's house and I get up on them uh, and, and our team gets up on them, uh, you know, 20, 30 points, I, you know, I, I've certainly slowed the game down, uh, you know, before, because I don't think that's good for business. I don't think that's good for the league or for home teams to be getting blown out like that at home. So, you know, I've, I've purposely pumped the brakes uh, when, when, when uh, you know, uh, and we're always going to be a talented football team because we work at recruiting uh, and, uh, you know, we don't stop recruiting until we feel like we got all the pieces. Now, you know, the, you know, the other thing is, is we try to have all the pieces coming out of training camp. I, you know, I watch transactions and sometimes, you know, I see it looks like teams are building their rosters as the year goes along. We like to have all our answers coming out of training camp or at least 90 percent of them so that uh, now obviously you can't control injuries. Right. But, uh, you know, we try to have the answers so that we can start developing you know, that chemistry with our, with these guys playing with one another and, and uh, uh, learning how to win together. Uh, but, you know, I, man, it's like every week I look at transactions and teams are just boom, 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 player after player after player. And, and, and I get it once you get into injuries, but uh, I don't know. I, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I, we really study and try to have the answers personnel wise coming out of camp. And I think that's why you always see the Rattlers start fast. And, and and we have a great season because we we really work at having having the pieces coming coming out of training camp. Yeah, it's a part of what uh, has kept the the Rattlers at the top at the top of your conference uh, year in and year out, and and always there either knocking at the door or in that championship game year after year after year with the Rattlers. But Coach Guy, first half was slow a slow first half, not that exciting. But you came out and you uh, you got things working in the second half. What did you say? to your guys at halftime 
you had to light a bit of a fire, and I think it. I think it. Uh, the evidence on the field was that it. Whatever you said made a difference, and it and it got the guys a little more motivated. So what what, what happened in the locker room at halftime to get the guys going? Uh, I mean, you know, I, I, to be frank with you, I didn't say much to them. Um, you know, I just kind of went in and and uh, you know, I, you know, I kind of joked around with them a little bit, and just you know, but I you know, I pointed out what was happening. Uh, you know, in the game, and and you know, it was obvious that they were trying to play a, a slow, methodical game, and and you know, keep keep it close, and and so that they could have a chance at the end. And uh, you know, if you're looking at it through their, you know, uh, eyes, um, you know, maybe that was the best game plan they could come up with. I don't, I don't know. I, I I coach the Rattlers. I'm not as as focused on them, but you know, when you play a team like that. Um, that that is trying to do that to you. And we've had other teams in the league. It's not just Bay Area. I mean, we've had we've had other teams through the years try that same thing. And you know, you, you got to have success on first downs. If you have success on first down and you could get a lead, they they have to get out of that offense. It's kind of like running the option, right? It all it's all great until you get behind, and then once you get behind, it's hard to catch up, right? So, um, you know, so that's you know, I, you know, I just talked to the players about having success on first down, having you know. Uh, get him, getting some separation on the points. Uh, so that puts them in a different mindset. Hey, Coach Kevin Guy on the Arizona Rattlers Coaches Show, everybody. And so a victory on the weekend, 38-23, to 23, the final score. Arizona defeated the Bay Area Panthers on Sunday. And in that game, your receiving core, which is always a, a focal point for the team, um, there was some some notable things uh, to mention. The first thing is Jared Harrington's return. He started to get back into the rotation, get on the field. We saw him on special teams returning the football. We saw him out there running routes in your passing game as well. And uh, it looks like it's going to be kind of a slow work, hit, work him more into action as the weeks go along. So I'd ask you about Jared Harrington as well as the player of the game that we picked on the night, he scored two touchdowns, one on a receiving touchdown. The other one, he ran in a rushing touchdown. That's Jamal Miles. Jamal had a great game, led your team in receiving on Sunday. And uh, those two guys, part of your your outstanding receiving core and a couple of names that were notable from Sunday. Yeah, you know, we, we were happy to have Harrington back. You know, we already felt like we had a, we have a talented receiving core, but he just he adds to the depth there. You know, he was hurt last year. Uh, coming off an injury that he he spent the last eight months, you know, trying to get back to return. And, you know, we knew he was going to be rusty and, and, you know, but we dressed him and, um, you know, we wanted to start knocking the rust off. We still got about a half a season, a little, a little less than a half a season left. And, you know, if, if he's going to be a, a major contributor for us, then we got to get the, the rust knocked off of him. But, you know, uh, that starts with, with practicing faster, um, you know, uh, out, out, you know, during the week, and then you know, so the so the game slows down for you when you get back out there. But you know, I thought Jamal Miles. You know, we we kind of challenged him during the week. Uh, just hadn't felt like he had been himself the last two or three games, and and we kind of challenged him a little bit. And you know, he caught every ball in that game with his hands. Uh, you know, he, he uh, did a great job on special teams. You know, rushing the football, he did a great job blocking. I mean, just all around. So. I thought Jamal Miles had a great game, and uh, hopefully he continues to build and gets back to being the Jamal Miles that, that we know uh, that we can hang our hat on and be consistent week in and week out. You know, there were some guys that got uh, some action, both on offense and defense, uh, new additions, certainly new, new guys in the lineup. Now is, of course, in answer to some personnel changes and injuries that you're dealing with, and you have – you know, steadily stayed away, coach, from using injuries as any excuse for the overall performance of the team in the last three weeks. But what would you say about personnel right now? Um, again, new guys that got a chance to get in and play, maybe prove something, prove that they belong. Guys that have come back for you that played in the past. And what I asked you this uh, before the game, before, I think it was before the game, I asked you a question about um, – um, the, the team being ready when it comes to the playoffs, and do you think that they're going to be ready uh, health-wise? And do you like where you're positioning yourself when the playoffs eventually get here? Will this be a healthy team? So if you followed that very abstract and um, uh, you know uh, <laughs> windy road of a question there, 
I'm just trying to find out where you, you know, how you feel about the personnel right now. Well, I mean, it, you know, it's not fun when you're going through it, you know, with the injuries, but it is an opportunity to get guys reps and, 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 uh, you know, let them get stronger at their craft. Um, you know, and you come out stronger on the other side. Once those guys get healthy, now you got, you got your depth is, is, uh, been fine tuned a little bit. So, um, yes, we, we had some guys get some, uh, opportunity there. Eric Magwood, I, you know, I thought he, uh, yeah, there was three, four plays with the snaps that I'm sure he wants back, but I thought for his first game, he's very aggressive. Uh, you know, did well for us. Um, Jacoby Taylor came back and, and, and played his second game with us, uh, you know, this year. And there were some good things that he did. And there were some things he, he's got to continue to work on and, and, and get better at. But, um, you know, overall, um, you know, and then also on our D-line, uh, CT, uh, Chris Terrell and, and, uh, and Theo, um, you know, both of those guys was their second and third game with us. And, uh, you know, I thought they did a, did a good job and they're continuing to get better week to week. So I think in the end, we're going to be a much stronger team once we get guys back healthy and uh, you're going to see some guys get healthy this week. Um, and, uh, you know, be back in the lineup and you're going to see some guys next week get healthy and be back in the lineup. So, we're close. Um, as long as nothing happens this weekend, we're we're close to getting back to, um, you know, being uh, full tilt here. And and, uh, and and let's see how we play down the back stretch. Up next for the Rattlers is another matchup with the Bay Area Panthers. Like you said, uh, not very uh, not very often do you play back to back, but you got them at your place. Now you're going to go play them at their place. Go on the road. And by the way, the start of a three game road trip and that grind for your team. A couple of tough tough games coming up for you. And Bay Area approved, they can make it tough on you as well. So uh, let's talk about where, you know, where, you know, the, the front end of a long road trip and beginning in Bay Area this weekend. Well, no one's overlooking Bay Area. I mean, you know, they're an expansion team. I'm sure that, you know, they're disappointed with what the record is right now. But one thing I've learned over the years is you can't get caught up looking at records because – you know, as the as as the season goes, those those teams that are not doing very well, you know, they get better, and um, they start figuring it out. They start learning the game, and then all of a sudden, that's why you see teams with with losing records slip up and beat a team with winning records, uh, because you know it's really a mindset. You know, you, you better be dialed into it. So I don't I don't think anybody here will be overlooking the the Bay Area. I'll, I'll make sure of that, but. Uh, are, are they capable of coming in and beating you and, and winning? Absolutely. I mean, you know, those guys get paid to play too. So, you know, they're getting better. There's no doubt. And, and I, I can see that, when, you know, when I watch film, obviously when we played against them this past weekend, uh, you know, they're not the same team that I watched early in the season. So uh, some teams better look out. We need to look out for this weekend. You know, I'm kind of excited to go back uh, uh, to San Jose uh, this weekend and play. Play in that building. I mean, that, that that building, you know, I have some memories in that building. You know, before I took the head coaching job at the Arizona Rattlers, I was the defensive coordinator for the San Jose Sabercats, and we won the championship in 07. I was up there, you know, for two seasons. And, and um, you know, I, I was in AF2 for four years and got head coaching experience. And then I went back to the AFL uh, as a coordinator to kind of make that next jump to – to try to be a head coach in the in the AFL, the Arena League, and and uh, you know, and John Fry, uh, Darren Arbat, you know, uh, hired me up in, in in San Jose, and I had a had a great experience up there, you know, and uh, uh, we you know we won the won the championships. So going back and seeing this building, you know, it's where my son was born. Uh, I was working there when when Cody was born. Um, and uh, he was born on on, on Saint Saint Patty's Day. He calls it Saint Cody's Day. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's funny. We we had a big game against the Georgia Force that year, and uh, I think we were both at the top of the standings. And it was a big game, and, and we had a bye week the week before we played them. And and uh, I taught my wife into inducing, and you know, in, in labor. <laughs> and we had it. We did it that weekend. That weekend of the bye week. Uh, so that I could be at the, the be at the game, and she didn't go into labor while we were trying to get ready. So she she she's been a trooper from day one, man. And uh, you know, Cody Cody was uh, you know all about uh, 
you know, he was born into football. So, uh, but you know, he, he's actually going to uh, take the trip with me uh, this weekend. And uh, uh, I'm going to go up and show him where he was born at. And, nice. And, uh, and nice. So, pretty, he's going to love that. Yeah. Cody's going to love that. And, and I'll bet, I'll bet that was a great defense that you coached at San Jose when you were there and you guys won a championship. Um, yeah, and you're a defensive. Yeah, that was the best defense in arena football history. We, we were really, we were, we were pretty much in top five, top three, whatever it was in every category, in every category. And, uh, uh, we, we, we really had a great defense that year. We had some great players and, and, uh, you know, we, we, we finished strong. I think we finished with like a, 10 game win streak, whatever it was. And, and, uh, we were, we were really good that year. Well, as much of a defensive guy as you are, and you played defense in the league when you did play, you're also the offensive, you're, you're the, you're the brains behind the offense as you're, you're out there playing. Is that, is that a difficult thing for you to, to be so involved on both sides of the ball? Not at all. Uh, I prefer it that way. Um, you know, I, I don't know where I got tagged as a defensive guy, I guess, you know, because, you know, everybody says, well, Kevin was a defense back. I played in the Ironman days. I was also a receiver. Okay, okay? sure. So, sure. I, you know, and I played both ways in college. I played receiver and DB in college. So, you know, I, I was cut out for that Ironman football. And, uh, you know, but I was also a high school quarterback. So I, I've always paid attention to what goes on. And I don't know how you can coach one side uh, without understanding the other side. So, you know, I've, I've, I've uh, really – you know, even John Fry, who owned the San Jose Sabercats back in the day, he told me he thought it was the one of the smartest moves I ever did as a coach was to position myself to do both. And, you know, you have small staffs in this business, and it's not always who you want to hire, it's who's available. And so, you know, I, I did it because I felt like I could do it, um, but I also did it to uh, wherever I'm short at you know, on staff, I could always move to one side of the ball or the other to make yeah. the to make the staff work, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I put a lot of thought into that and, and, uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, from the time I was a player and the coach and I've always studied both sides of the ball and, uh, you know, it's always, always been a fit for me and, 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 you know, it's, it's worked, um, you know, shoot. I mean, since I've been in Arizona, we've, we've won four championships with me doing both and, uh, and we weren't so good. If you go back and look at the beginning of my tenure uh, as the head coach at Arizona Rattlers, we, you know, we were okay, but we weren't as good as we've been uh, when I had offensive coordinators. I had two offensive coordinators, and I just think I, I can I can manage in this game. The one minute situations are so important uh, at the end of each half. I don't have time to be radioing out there trying to talk to some coordinator and telling him what he needs to be doing. Uh, you know, it's just easier if I do it myself and I can manage the game a lot better, speed it up, slow it down. Uh, so it's worked for me. It's not for everybody. Uh, I don't I don't think everybody it, it, it can do it. But, uh, you know, it, it certainly has helped me in my career. And, and and it's helped me understand the adjustments. When I came into this league in the indoor football league, doing both helped me understand the adjustments a lot quicker uh, than, than having – having, you know, two different coordinators and, uh, you know, so I've been fortunate, you know, uh, in my career and I've always been a student of the game uh, and, and, uh, and try to pay attention to that. Well, coach, it's a formula that's working for sure for, for the Rattlers getting set to take on once again, the Bay area Panthers this coming weekend, everybody, it'll be on the road, San Jose. That's the next location. Game one of a three game road trip road swing for for the Rattlers, that includes Northern Arizona the following week and then Duke City before finally coming back on June 25th and playing at home in front of Rattler Nation, taking on the Tucson Sugar Skulls. That's what the schedule holds for everybody. Coach, let's wrap up with a little get-to-know-your-coach your guy, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question that kind of takes you back to that transition period between playing in the uh, playing arena football, indoor football, and coaching. So you obviously at some point had to give one up to, 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 to take on the other. And, you know, we always have these, uh, we hear about these stories in the past, uh, baseball especially. It was a little, in the old school days, there were some football coaches that coached and played at the same time. Baseball had Pete Rose. Pete Rose managed and played with the Cincinnati Reds at, at the same time at one point. 
But let me ask you, when you were making that transition, you decided, okay, I'm I'm done playing. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go coach. There had to be a period of time where you were coaching where you felt like, well, I could still play the game. I can still play. Um, how long did that last? And when did you finally figure out and decide I'm done? There's no way I would come back now, even if they paid me a million dollars. I ain't coming back to play. Was there a point in your life where you realized, okay, now it's over? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, you know, 1999 was my last year playing. I played for the Orlando Predators, and I was planning on going back. You know, Jay Gruden was the head coach, um, you know, and, and Jay and I had a relationship and, and, and still have one till the day. But, you know, we, we, you know, after that year, there was a lot of talk about, you know, a strike. And, you know, in the arena league and, um, and it got to the point where I, I believe it was early January. They, they came out on ESPN and announced that we canceled the season. And, you know, I was a player then, so I didn't really know what was going on behind the scenes. I just know that the commissioner at the time, it was David Baker, who just recently retired as the president of the uh, NFL hall of fame. He was our commissioner. And uh, I just remember them coming out and there was a statement and they canceled the season. And then about less than a week later, boom, they announced that the season was back home. And, uh, but during that time, uh, you know, didn't know if we were going to play or not. Uh, I, I certainly wanted to go back and play. Uh, I, I felt like I had another good three or four years in me. Uh, but, I, you know, before I played for Orlando, I played for the New Jersey uh, Red Dogs. And I had relationships up there. I had a good career up there. Uh, knew knew you know knew the ownership well knew the coaching staff well um and in the off season i was coaching at saint peter's high school in staten island okay um just to kind of get my feet wet while i was playing i was coaching high school ball in the fall just yeah. kind of get my feet wet to see if i you know if that's really what i want to do I, I always wanted to coach but uh you know you don't know until you really get out there and try it you know and uh so i, I coached a couple years at saint peter's high school so I had, I, you know, I kept this relationship with the Red Dogs. Well, they called me and asked me to come in and be the defensive back coach uh, in 2000. And uh, while I was working in in uh, uh, in training camp, uh, you know, I, and I took the job because I was like, hey, if I if I sign the coaching contract and we don't play, I'm under contract, and I'll still get paid. If I if I stayed on and, and played, mm -hmm. and and we didn't play then we weren't going to get paid. So I went for the for sure money. I was like, hey, I'll sit out a year coach, maybe come back and play that next year. Well, my first year coaching, I was a defensive back coach. And while we were in training camp, Frank Mattiace was the, the head coach. Frank asked me, and me and Frank, I worked for Frank over at the St. Peter's High School as his defensive back coach over there um, as well. And and uh, he left St. Peter's, became the head coach for the Red Dogs. Uh, he was also our D-line coach for the Red Dogs before he became the the head coach and he asked me to come back and coach and then during training camp he asked me to to become the you know to oversee the defense the defense coordinator and you know i guess he felt like i was you know he wanted to focus on being a head coach and he was a fairly new head coach himself it was like a second or third year and i think he wanted to focus on on being a head coach and making those decisions and I, and, and he was waiting to see you know uh, how i would do and you know he advanced me during training camp so i was the defense coordinator that year um and and look, we were at the time. You know, the whole year we were third in you know third in the league in defense. Well, with four games to go, um, ownership made a made a change at head coach, and uh, you know it's unfortunate. But the only person that ownership knew on the staff because Frank had brought in a lot of new people uh, was me uh, because I played for that organization. So they asked me to be the interim head coach. So my first year coaching, I went from you know, being the defensive back coach to the defensive coordinator to the head coach <laughs> and yeah. the interim head coach, I should say. Yeah. And as soon as the season was over, they signed me to the contract and made me the permanent head coach. Okay. Well, I was still young. I didn't understand the business yet. I was still learning the business side and everything moved fast. And that's, I think that's the fastest this ever went for anybody. It went from playing the year before to Position coach, coordinator, head coach, interim head coach, and then permanent head Absolutely, coach. Absolutely, yeah. Well, then during the off season, uh, the owner sold the team. And looking back on it, and knowing what I know now, he was fond of me as a as a player, as someone that worked for the organization. 
he was financially taking care of me. He, he got me under contract. He knew he was going to sell the team. Um, and he wanted to protect me. So when the new buyer bought the team, if they wanted me as the head coach, I was already under contract. If they wanted to bring in their own guy, they had to pay me out, you know, because I was under contract. So looking back on it, he, he did a solid job uh, of, of taking care of me. Uh, but my career moved so fast in coaching. Soon as soon as uh, I was I was done with that year, and, and that's what happened. A new owner came in. He wanted to bring his own coach in. You know, they bought me out, and I went on and became. You know, I had I, to be frank with you. I had four or five offers to go coach mm-hmm. for other organizations, yeah. and uh, I wound up going down and becoming the defensive coordinator down in Florida. And 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 then that next year, I jumped back to being a head coach. Uh, you know, with the Vipers and Huntsville, Alabama. And I went back to AF2 and got my four years of experience of head coaching and then Sabercats and then Arizona. So, I mean, that's that's how it went for me, and it went fast. So to answer your question, once it started moving so fast, I didn't have time to think about going back and play. Now, when things kind of slowed down after a couple of years, that I'd say to myself, hey, I can still go out there and do it. Absolutely, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and that would have been, you know, what would have been amazing is here's a guy who, uh, here's a guy who was, has been a head coach in the league and, and now he's back to playing again. I mean, yeah. th- th- there's something that it just never happens. Well, you know, it, 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 once I got a taste of being a head coach and, and, and my career took off as fast as it did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, I long term, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. So why, why risk it? You might as well just stay on the path and, and, and keep going. And, uh, I've been blessed. I mean, there's been a lot of people that, that advised me through the years. And, and uh, you know, I tried not to burn bridges as I was moving through, uh, uh, you know, the league with my career. And, you know, uh, you know, Jerry Kerr's was, you know, became, eventually became the commissioner. And I've always had a great relationship with with, with Jerry and stayed in Dunn. That don't mean we always got along. You know, we, you know, head coach, commissioner, they butt heads every once in a while. But, uh that's that's just part of the business, but uh, I've always considered Jerry a friend, and and, and uh, he's he's always done a done right by me, and and uh, uh, I've always been appreciative of that. But you know, there's other coaches, and and you know, through the years that I've stayed in touch with, and and, and still check on them. You know, uh, you know, even though they've moved on from coaching, you know, I, I still check in with a lot of a lot of a lot of those guys. Good stuff, coach. Big game coming up this weekend. You got Bay Area once again. And then uh, you continue the road swing after that with Northern Arizona next up on the schedule. And that'll do it. That'll do it for this episode of the uh, Arizona Rattlers Coaches Show. Kevin Guy, a coach, yeah, have a great rest of your week and uh, good luck on on the weekend. You bet. We appreciate you, Floyd. Thank you. You got it. You got it. Folks, do uh, do plan to join us for the next, uh, the next edition of the Arizona Rattlers Coaches Show. And until next time, for Coach Guy, I'm Floyd Simmons. Go Rattlers. We'll see you next time, Rattler Nation. Figured out a way to do it.